Hi Go Discover fans, my name's Anton and in this video we're going to start to get a little bit more advanced. I've now installed the APM 2.6 so I have stability and return to home features. Um, I've also installed my um, FPV equipment so I now have my video transmitter in there. Um, I've also got uh, voltage regulators and UBEX and so on. So I'd like to show you how I've laid stuff out and hopefully if the weather's good tomorrow then uh, we can start to test that out uh, line of sight and see how it all works. Uh, in some later episodes I plan to do, I'm going to show you how I've actually set it up on the computer and everything, how I've gone through the, the configuration and so on to connect it to my receiver, uh, yeah, get it all set up in the plane so it's ready to fly. Um, but I'll show you that in later series. In this one, I'm just going to show you how I've laid some stuff out and just uh, a basic overview. So here's my Go Discover, and uh, let's start by looking on the outside. The first thing now you'll see is that I've installed the video transmitter. This is a 1.2 gigahertz uh, transmitter, and uh, it doesn't have any heat sink on it, so hence why I've mounted it up outside of the body of the plane. I kind of feel like if I put this inside the plane, um, it's not going to get cooled enough. It's probably going to go overheat, and then I'm going to lose my video. So. The idea with this is that it should have a, uh, a stream of air cooling it down. Um, so let's see how that, how that progresses over the next set of videos. Uh, as you've seen in my videos before, this, this one here is the Dragon Link. This is the positive uh, part of the Dragon Link antenna. And then underneath there, there's a negative one. So you've seen that one before. Uh, let's go into the main uh, part of the fuselage. So um, I've mounted my battery. I'm not going to harp on about my kit, but it's available on eBay if you want it to secure the battery. Um, what I have done now, if we, if we focus on power first of all, so here I have um, the 3DR, uh, the 3D Robotics um, power module. Now this one actually comes with um, a BEC, with a, a BEC, so that's going to provide 5 volts in, let me see if I can get it now, uh, this cable with many many wires, the black cable here with one red, uh, that's going to provide uh, 5 volts of power to power the, the APM board. So if I come in here a little bit closer, let's see now. So this connector here, uh, it's the one that's going to go into the PM port at the back. So this cable here, that's what's going to power the APM uh, board. And the way I've decided to do it is not to put in jumper one. And jumper one's around about uh, in here somewhere. Yeah, I've not installed jumper one. So this power module... Um, through this multi well, number of wires, I think it's about five or six, uh, six wires, I think, five or six wires anyway. That's that's powering this side of the board here. Um, so the analog, the the input, um, and also the GPS and the compass. Um, now in the instructions for the APM board. It says that you shouldn't power any servos on, on, on this side of the board using the power module. I think it's only something like 2.25 amps or, or whatever that that can actually draw. So you don't want to be powering all your servos um, from this power module. So because jumper 1 is not installed, then I have um, uh, a 5, 5 volt BEC coming in uh, on the throttle channel. You'll see that in one of my other videos. Uh, so that's on channel 3, and that's powering the output rails of the board. Uh, and then uh, all the servos, uh, the Elevon the servos out on the wings, and also the servos to, uh, to uh, move the gimbal, they're also powered from, uh, from that part of the board. Um, right, so then uh, let's go over to this side here. I've mounted my... Uh, my GPS uh, receiver and this one also has um, an inbuilt um, compass yeah so the smaller the the 
the what would it be the, the gray and the green wire that's actually for the compass so that's going back down here towards uh, I think it's what is it called I2C connector there uh, just two cables on that one uh, because this one because it's an integrated board it's getting its five volts from the red here and the ground from here uh, so then, then the GPS connector is connected there and I'm going into the same unit. Um, now I did, I did think it was quite odd uh, with this unit that the writing is at the front like this. If I look at how I've mounted it in the plane here, uh, you would think that as you look in from the front that you would not read the writing, but anyway. Um, I mounted it like this and, and that means that uh, uh, it's pointing in the right direction for the compass. So I mounted up there. Then I have installed the Minim OSD here. Uh, this uh, black and red wire here, that's coming from a 12 volt regulator in the, in the back. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, so that's powering, that's supplying 12 volts to the input channel. And what I have done here is that then you see this black and white wire. Black is video ground and white is video. And that's coming in here into the, the top part of the Minim OSD. Uh, so that's providing my video in and also 12 volts. Now I'm not obviously taking a red cable to my GoPro because that's just going to blow it up. I don't need that. I have a battery in the GoPro to power the GoPro. So this is just to provide 12 volts to this rail here that will then power my video transmitter. So I try and get in here. So the video transmitter, uh, this one only comes with four cables. The yellow one is video, the red one is 5 volts, uh, I think it's a white one uh, that's audio and then the black one for ground. So I didn't need the audio, I just popped that out and took that away to keep it nice and tidy. So the 12 volts that's being supplied here from the voltage regulator, that's providing the 12 volts through the red cable towards the, towards the video transmitter. The white cable coming here in. Uh, that's video in, that's just going straight to the video out, um, uh, the yellow one. Uh, well, not going straight to it, you could say. It's obviously going through the OSD and then the, um, the on-screen display is being overlaid on. Um, and then the black is, uh, is, is ground. Now, you needed to have a shared ground between power and video. So, when I created this top connector, all I did was I took the ground from the video and the ground from the 12 volt regulator and put them in the same connector so I made that myself yeah okay uh, we'll continue from there then this cable at the back uh, you can buy these cables but uh, I was a bit impatient so I just made it myself um, uh, so this this three three wired connector here this three wire lead is going into let's see here the telemetry port at the back and using the Mavlink, uh, whatever it is, uh, pulses, um, it's reading telemetry off there and it's able to, yeah, get stuff like um, the power, the voltage of the battery, the, the current that's being used at the moment through the, um, through the power module, um, and a whole range of other things. Uh, GPS coordinates, direction, distance from home, blah 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 blah. Lots of stuff here. So uh, I'll try and uh, I'll try and cover a video on how I've set that up um, using an FTDI connector. I think I'll show that in another video. Anyway, so that's plugging into the the APM board here at the back um, um, in the telemetry board, right? Um, over this side then, let's take these uh, series of cables here. Uh, that's going to my Dragon Link receiver. So I've showed you that before. Now, as it was a little bit of a technical um, issue I came across. Um, if I, when I set up my APM board, 
uh, I couldn't uh, I could use channel 4 uh, the rudder channel so to say um, I could use that rudder channel to to um, operate the, the, the pan servo but when I uh, plugged into channel 5 now channel 5 is a switch um, you know, it expects to have some kind of switch a 2 or 3 position switch it didn't expect to have some kind of variable yeah variable rate input um, like you would need to run a servo so like a rudder you can use your stick to it would expect a switch so I had trouble setting that up maybe there's a way of solving it but the way I solved it was you see I'm taking the power so there's only one cable here the red one I'm taking the power from that and I'm running it down this this red cable that's on its own and then I'm taking ground and signal from one of the ports here. I think it's uh, port 10 it would be for my tilt mechanism. So I'm taking the signal and the, the power, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, the, the signal and the ground from the receiver. But I'm taking the power from the power rail here that's being uh, powered by the, the BEC. So, as I said in the earlier part of this video, I'm powering all the servos from this rail, but I, all, I need to have the signal uh, coming from my receiver, not the power coming from my receiver. Uh, I could, probably could get away with it, but it's not recommended, uh, so I just did it like this. And then it comes into um, a female uh, servo connector, and then the, the cables run underneath the battery tray towards the, the tilt uh, servo. So that's how I've solved it. It was a bit of a bit of a hassle. Um, I'll continue now then towards the back of the the plane. I think I covered everything here in the front. Uh, so the power module. Um, I've got two uh, thicker wires here going towards the ESC to be able to cope with the current uh, from uh, to, to power that kind of stuff. So let's go around the back now. Um, Let's pull this a little bit closer. Um, so now we're going to go into the back bay here and I'll show you what I've done. Uh, first of all, let me see, here I've, I've put in some uh, servo extension cables and I've labelled them L for left wing and R for right wing. So when I, um, when I uh, plug the wings in and I run the, the servo connector for the the uh, through through the through the back here. It's easy for me just to connect them up. Just put the cables in there, put the lid on, and that's it. Not have to try to fiddle around plugging it into the the back rail there of the the APM board. That's just going to be a hassle and uh, take forever when I'm when I'm out in the field and I just want to start flying. So I try and get these guys out of the way so we can see what's going on in here. Now first of all, there's... Um, not really getting them out of the way, but never mind. Uh, first of all, there's there's um, a wall of foam here. And behind the wall of foam, then I've actually mounted the, the ESC. I'm not using the 5 volts from the, the ESC for anything. I've, I've mentioned that in my former video, so I've just tie-wrapped it uh, in here. So I've stuffed the whole ESC in the back part there. Uh, then what I've done is using double-sided sticky foam, I've mounted this 12-volt regulator that I bought from, bought from Hobby King. So that 12-volt regulator is plugged into uh, the, the other side of the power module. I've made some, some connectors on that wiring harness to have a... Uh, what is it? Oof, I forget what kind of connector it was. Anyway, um, difficult when you're on the spot. Uh, so I'm, 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 taking, I'm using this 12 volt regulator and that's the wire that's going that you saw towards the, the minimum OSD. Uh, and then that's powering, the, that's giving the 12 volts from my video transmitter. And then also using double sided sticky foam, there's my UBEC. And this is the, the one that's providing... Um, uh, I've set it to provide 5 volts and that's what's going into the throttle channel and um, 
uh, giving me the, the the five volts that I need on the on the, the output rail of the APM board that will power all of my servos. So I've stuck all of the the UBEX and uh, power regulators and the ESCs in the back here. So all of that messy, noisy stuff is is all in the back uh, together with the motor. Um, yeah, and then I have uh, on the on the UBEC you have this uh, switch. Um, so when I go to pick up uh, pick up the Go Discover after I've finished flying it and so on, what I can do is just pop off the hatch, switch this off, and then I know the 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 motor's safe. Um, there's no, there's not going to be anything, uh, um, no signals possible to go to the motor to start it to spin. So then it's safe for me to walk back until I've unplugged the battery. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's it, guys. I uh, hope this was useful. Uh, give us a th thumbs up if it, if it is. Give us some comments. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions. I, I hope I've covered a lot of the questions I've. I've had so far from you lot, um, but as I say, just uh, if I can help out, just uh, just let me know. Cheers.